Well, Dan Murphy, co-founder of local rock band Soul Asylum, has another passion. Besides music, it is pulp fiction art. And touring with the band has given him the opportunity to add his collection of pulp magazine cover art. As Emmy Roscoe shows us, the images are provocative and today highly collectible. You are looking at Port O Dreams, just one of the Pulp Fiction cover art pieces on display here at Red Wing Framing and Fine Art Printing. I'm with Daniel Murphy, and this is a good example of the, the images that initially drew you into collecting this. It was it was pinup stuff. How exactly. did you get started doing that? Well, this artist is Enoch Bowles, who um, did a lot of covers for Film Fun magazine, and. Um, I'd gone to sales and I'd seen the pinup calendars from the 20s, 30s, and 40s. And um, in the 90s, with a little bit of the success afforded by the band, I started collecting the original paintings. And the first pieces I bought were by an artist named Rolf Armstrong. And um, over the years, they've really, um, like, a field has developed of people that, you know, a lot of the original art was just completely discarded when it was done. It was used to create a cover and it would sit in warehouses and just kind of deteriorate. So. Pieces of this era are really, really scarce today, and the paintings by this artist sell for sixty-five, seventy thousand dollars today. So, did people, in, did other people in the band or your friends think that you were nutty for collect? They still do, but yes, that is uh, <laughs> across the board. It was, uh, you know, but I kind of saw something in this stuff. I'd, I'd look at it and I'd say, wow, I'd like the, you know, the fact that, you know, a man that I've seen his calendars spent a week of his life creating this on a deadline for a cover of a magazine or a calendar and you can buy it for two thousand dollars that seems crazy to me this genre is kind of started in the early 50s and it was like until about 1970 and it's kind of very tough guy related and it was really playing on people's fears like the cold war fear of cuba and it really borrowed like from kind of um russian and chinese propaganda poster Im imagery and it was like this really kind of hyper realist photo realism and these are actual paintings that you can see like every drop of sweat and here's the magazine and this is uh, the shocking revenge of Norway's partisan nymph is what it yeah. was you know and it's like it, it, the content of these is just remarkable. The oh my case, gosh, there's my life story. Case the of case the of fast yeah, yeah, interesting. I'm sure they're a good read too. <laughs> yes. And like they'd have like contests and aerial surveys. Are you a, a real man? Like you have to answer questions by how little you care about stuff. So it was a really odd time. Well, I think it's clear when you, when you open the magazine that the cover art, well, while they did start to put pictures inside the magazines, the cover was supposed to Absolutely. sell. It was all about the cover. What were people's fears? What were their dreams? What were they afraid of? What were they being fed? And it's just, it's kind of, it just kind of drew me in. Well, the exhibit is called Hard Boiled Art. It's here in Red Wing, or you can check out the collection online, and we'll have more information about that online. So, back to you. All right. Thanks, M.A.